look for an occupation that you like, and you will not need to labor for a single day in your life. Welcome to Career Corner. Hello, my name is Pat Bowes and I will be the host today for our show Career Corner. I am really pleased to have with us Eileen Higgins, who is the director of the Monmouth County Division of Workforce Development. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to be I'm, here. I'm really happy about today's show. Uh, I've been wanting to have you on for a while, and um, I really am pleased that we'll be able to tell our viewers what you do um, in regards to workforce development, where you do it, and who's eligible to receive services from you. So. Without any further ado, mm -hmm. just give us some background in regards to what is workforce development. Sure. Uh, Monmouth County Workforce Development is, uh, we call it, one of the best kept secrets in Monmouth County, um, and we don't want it to be. It, uh, we provide services to people who are unemployed, underemployed, or just seeking a new job. Um, we're located on 145 Wyckoff Road in Eatontown. And we're open to the public. Um, anyone can use our services, whether they're employed or unemployed. Uh, there is el in income eligibility for certain services we provide, but the uh, whole program itself is open to the public. And um, how long have you been with them? I've been with the county for four years now. And, and I'm sure you've been through a lot, especially yes. most recently, and we'll talk about that a little later. Um, as far as um, what services do you provide, and uh, I know that it's open to the public, but again, maybe a little more detail about criteria. Sure. Um, we're funded by the Department of Labor, the New Jersey Department of Labor. We, we report to both the Workforce Investment Board and the Monmouth County Board of Chosen Freeholders. And under their guidance, we um, provide really any kind of workforce development services you could imagine. We do workshops on career uh, development, um, tracking your careers, where what it, your career path might be, resume writing, interviewing skills. Uh, we also are able to help people who are underskilled or have their, their skills are, are outdated to send them back to training and get their skills more relevant, more current to, for what the uh, current employers are looking for. So let's stay with that one for a minute. Um, again, we work with a, the 50 plus population and when we look at skills being, in the need of skills being updated, what does that usually look like? It really depends on the individual and how, how much they stayed current in their, in their previous um, employment or, or the current employment that they're looking to change. Um, the computer skills are a huge, uh, it, it's the tool in g going forward in, in any business. You need to have computer skills. So we have a, a, a ba it's called a basic skills lab, but it's a, it's a lab. Um, where anyone can come in and use the lab. We have teachers there and they can work on their skill, their computer skills. We have Rosetta Stone if someone needs to brush up on, ink, on their, uh, any language. Oh, now I know where to go. Yes. <laughs> um, we do have a preference to, the, the lab has preference to people who are working to bring their basic skills up, math and, and English. We have a teacher and, and an aide uh, there who, who works with them. Um, and we have um, a, an open public resource area as well, which is has a computers. Um, again, you can write resumes. Uh, we, we're partnered with the, the New Jersey Department of Labor and their uh, new Jobs for Jersey uh, work uh, website. Okay, and um, so in your labs, uh, people w pretty much work on their own, or is is there someone there to give them guidance on how to do some searches, whether it's for skill set enhancement or job search? Uh, yes, both Yes, both uh, are, are correct. People can work on their own, they have headphones, they can um, go through tutorials, or they can work with a teacher, or our staff, our counselors are there. We do every Wednesday at what's a Career Connect, and we have volunteers come in, and, and our counselors as well, and provide workshops on whatever the needs are that the counselors, the staff is seeing, um, coming up across the board, and then we'll do a resume writing, show people how to use social media, how to create a Twitter account, how to um, get on LinkedIn, how to do job search. Yeah, I have to tell you, um, working with some people who come into our office, uh, there's no way that they can drop resumes off anymore. Everyone is now saying, go to our website and you can apply online. And they have that look, you know, that, that deer in the headlight look because they don't know how to do that. 
They don't know how to get on the site. They don't know how to answer those questions. Usually, I mean, many cases we found that it's really concise writing uh, in regards to telling the viewer, whoever that might be, what they did and how wonderful they were in that past job. So that that's a little scary, especially if uh, you've not grown up with a computer in your hand, so to speak. Um, so I'm really pleased that that service is available to um, the public. The other is, um, Who's eligible for your services? We had talked a little bit about income eligibility. Is there age restrictions or anything like that? No, our, we have programs for every age. Um, we have we have different funding sources, so we have uh, multiple programs. We do have youth programs that are start at age 16 um, and then up through the end of life. Um, we do if someone is going into a training program where we would pay for them to go back to school so uh, there are eligi income eligibilities there there's different criteria there and that's when we ask them to meet with a counselor the counselor would go over the specifics we do a, a large group orientation and explain the general criteria which it can be that you were uh, a dislocated worker which is that you lost a job your job through no fault of your own so when Fort Monmouth closed we had a huge um, dislocated worker population sure. that we address here in the county. Yeah. And then with the, the recent um, hurricanes, Hurricane Irene and then Hurricane Sandy, we've had a, a dislocated population that we work with and we get funding to work directly with them and, and so again depending on the situation there's different criteria and which funding source we use there's different criteria. So just tell us again where you're located and how does one get in touch with you? We're located at 145 Wyckoff Road, Suite 201 in Eatontown, and you can call for an appointment or just come in, and the phone number is 732-683-8850, and extension 1011 will connect you to the front desk. Wonderful. And um, the other thing that I really wanted to talk about is uh, you can't do this by yourself. So you, I'm sure that you have a lot of partners or other groups that you fund. Um, and work with regularly. So let's maybe talk about them a little bit and what services they provide. How do they get involved with you, looking on the other side of the, the coin, so to speak? Sure. Um, as, as I mentioned, we're with the Board of Chosen Freeholders in Monmouth County and the Workforce Investment Board. But then we also partner with the New Jersey Department of Labor. They have a, a one-stop center in Neptune, and they'll often be our front door for many of our clients will come through their location first and they're traditionally people that are on unemployment or eligible for unemployment but then we also work with Brookdale Community College um, the Monmouth County Division of Social Services we're looking to work for work with SCAN and the, the resources that you have here um, we really are reaching out into the the community and partnering with as many anyone who's working in uh, workforce development and just making it a stronger group Okay, so I, I know that in some cases that you do what is called RFPs, requests for proposals as far as partners or partnerships. Um, if someone was interested in that piece of your business, what does that look like? Again, there's different funding sources, so there's very uh, specific criteria. They, the best thing would be for them to call our office and to speak to our contracts and planning division. Um, we have funding for youth programs and we partner with uh, different high schools um, and, and community groups who work with youth 16 to 21. But then we also have funding to work with um, anyone who's receiving Workforce New Jersey and, and engaging the, um, the TANF and the general assistance population in helping develop their career plans and connecting them or reconnecting them with work with uh, employment. So most recently we, we've gone through this superstorm, so to speak and let's talk a little bit about some of your success stories or some of the things that you've gone through recently. I mean I know that um, ever, ever, so many people have been displaced, um, lost their jobs because their businesses or their employment employer had to close because of the storm. So just share some of the stories or some of the situations that you have found and, um, and some lessons learned in regards to that. Well, the being partner or um, under the Workforce Investment Board, the board itself is 50% businesses. So prior to the storm, we were really ramping up our business development section uh, division and working closely with businesses. And when the storm hit, our business staff was able to go out and meet with businesses whom we now had a, be the beginning of a relationship and find out what their needs were. 
At the same time, we, were, we received a grant from the New Jersey Department of Labor to reconnect people who were displaced, who lost their jobs because of the storm, with businesses who lost their staff because of the storm, okay. and who were, or nonprofits who were reaching out and doing humanitarian work and helping uh, the, the com community to address the aftermath of the storm. So we were able to connect people who were either unemployed, not just from the storm, they could also have been long-term unemployed, and reconnecting them with the community. And, and so this is a new opportunity because of the new pot of money that people can get placed for a period of time to help with this whole recovery piece. Yes. Whether it's you know direct service or informational services or whatever the guidelines call for. Um, I, I'm sure that you have had lots of meetings where people showed up saying, so how does this work? Um, are they, how, how are you finding them in regards to, are they hopeful that this might be something that they can take and then grow in for eventually being full-time employed by these employers? If the, it, that's our hope with the employer and that is what we ask if that this can uh, turn into a full-time job understanding especially after the storm that that might not happen um, we do pay their wages so that helps the the company or the nonprofit or the municipality to to uh, have their funds go somewhere else f funding other positions and what we found is oftentimes is that the, they're good workers they're it's a good connection um, we spend time making sure it's a good connection and they often get hired afterwards in some capacity um, in the municipality or the area that they were working in. So that's a success story yes. if they get hired. I mean, again, sometimes when um, s one door closes, another one opens. I mean, that's what they tell me. Yes. And I, I believe that. I mean, everything. sometimes everything happens for a reason, but um, in the same token, I think that uh, a lot of people have stepped up during this emergency and all emergencies, so that's really happy to see or pleased to see. Um, I, I know that I've wor we've worked with your organization um, closely and, and you've been very helpful in regards to giving good information and, and you wear several other hats I know within your organization. Do you want to share any of that? Well, I'm the director of the Division of Workforce Development, but I'm also the executive director for the Workforce Investment Board, which is the policy side. And we're out in the community, again, connecting with businesses, trying to see what the trends are so that w we can come back and ha help the workforce develop, for not just for the businesses and the, the positions we have now, but the positions that are coming down further down the road. So prior to this, to um, the storm, we met with many community uh, uh, businesses in the community who are really looking at reaching back to even the high school level and putting some tracks in so that they can have the, the workforce that they're looking for once Being they, trained. yes. Yeah, appropriately. And again, the population that we work with is 50 plus. And so it becomes very challenging because that those tools weren't there and the education piece. But I, I, I have to tell you, they have, are rising to the occasion. And one of the things I'd like to just share with you, and we've talked about it, is that SCAN does have a computer lab here. And we are making it available to the public so that people who want to try to use the computer regularly and also to do job searches and um, to file claims that everyone I love during these emergency situations, they go to our website. Um, we're here to help them do that. We do have some trained professionals here who can help them. And if they need us and we're after hours, we're also available to make arrangements. So any last things before we end because our time is almost up? Um, I would just say the successes are not just connecting people with a job, but it's also helping to build their self-esteem and reconnecting them to the community. And we do that in the workshops. We'll do that through your computers. And we do that with the jobs that they have, and now they have something to put on their resume, which may help them get the next job. Yeah. So I want to take this opportunity and thank you. I, I, I know that you're incredibly busy, especially at this point in time, for being a guest on our show, Career Corner. Thank you. Thank you. I got no pulse for losing him. Sergeant, he's in V5. Shock him. Drives it road all the time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We're just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right. This isn't happening. He'll be fine. Yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really.
Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Hello, my name is Pat Bowes, and I am the host for today's show, Career Corner. Our guest today is Joseph Berner, and he is the uh, Employment Resource Liaison for Workforce 55 program. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for having me. I'm really pleased that you're here. Um, we've talked before, especially about this program, which yes. is one that I'm very interested in for a variety of reasons, especially that I've been in the field of aging for 35 years. Wow. And so I've heard about this um, and used it when I used to do some direct services. Okay. So I know that it's been around for a while. Right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what is Workforce 55 program? The Workforce 55 Plus program, it's basically, it's a job training program for older, 55 and older, unemployed, economically disadvantaged workers trying to get back into the workforce. Um, and what we like to call it is it's a work experience job training program. Um, so the whole idea is that we take people who meet the uh, income criteria, um, who are 55 and older and unemployed, and we put them into basically on the job training sites where they're going to sharpen their skills and basically stay current um, and hopefully find a job as a result of being in the program. And hopefully maybe at that work site find a job. Yes, I know absolutely. That one of the, the challenges is um, First, I think it's a two-way street, meaning finding people who are eligible sometimes could be challenging because first they have to learn about the program right. and then come forth. Right. And then the other is to find work sites um, right. that are willing to go along with the guidelines because this is not an employee who's placed there permanently. This is a training piece. Right. It, the, one of the challenges, because our income eligibility requirements are, are fairly low, I think for a, um, a person in a family of one, a single person, it's somewhere just um, a little bit over $13,900. So it is actually pretty low mm -hmm. to get into the program. But again, we're trying to target you know, the people who are the worst off and really need the jobs the most. And in most cases, what I've heard is that once um, these workers are placed, um, they become so valuable to the program that yes. the uh, program doesn't want to leave them or the employer doesn't want to lose them. Right. Um, but in the same token, it's not um, a program where someone comes and stays forever. Is there a time period in regards to how long they can stay in one place? Right. Um, well, a participant can be in the program for a maximum of four years. Okay. Um, generally, we like to reassign our participants to different sites once a year. Okay. Um, and basically, that will provide incentive sometimes for what we call the host agency site, which is the job training site. You know, they're going to lose the participant who's been valuable for a year. It may be incentive for them to actually hire them. Um, if not, then they're just going to the participant will be able to get more additional training, you know, at different locations. We call that cross-training. Right. <laughs> so that they become really good at one thing and then they go to the next work site. Right. And they learn a new skill, so they become more valuable. Right. Okay. And one, one, of the bi one of the nicest things about our program, um, we like to call it a win-win situation because our program pays our participants minimum wage, seven twenty-five an hour currently, um, for 20 hours a week. Um, because basically they'll be placed at, a, at their job site for 20 hours a week. Um, so they're getting, basically we call it a stipend while they're in training, and then the host site is getting free help for those 20 hours a week. So it is a win-win. Yes, it's a win-win situation. Um, one of the criteria, though, for the host sites is they have to be either nonprofit sites mm -hmm. or they have to be um, state, county, or local government offices. So you're both on the public and private side. So the public right. side would be government right. or some type of government organization that they would be housed in. Right. And the other is the not-for-profit world. Right, exactly. Who is always looking for good help. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure that you have more requests than you have slots available. Right, right. We are, we are limited in how many participants our program uh, can, can carry. We, we operate in 13 counties in New Jersey. And right now we're allowed to have 258 participants statewide, um, but each county has its own um, maximum number of participants. Okay. Um, so that is, you know, that's just another situation with, with the budget and the funding, um, some of the limitations that we have. 
So how does a host agency let you know that they're interested or they have um, a need or that um, a spot is available? Uh, a lot of times, one of, one of the things that um, I do in my role is to go out and find new host agency sites that may be interested. Um, so I'm a little bit of a salesman. I'll, I'll, I'll find a place. And what we like to do is we like to really one-on-one -on -one match um, our participants to their site. So we'll look at our participants' background, their skill set, what they're trying to do, um, and we'll find a place that will train them in that area. So if somebody has a filing background, a receptionist background, we'll find a place um, that is looking for or has an opening for a filing um, type person, a receptionist type person, or it could be somebody in a custodial maintenance um, you know, arena and we'll try to put them at a site that's looking for somebody to fill a role like, uh, you know, like that. We always take into consideration how far a participant lives from the host site, whether they have a, a car, transportation. public transportation. So it's, a, it's, a, it's really a lot of one-on-one -on -one matching. But as far as the, um, the host sites, if I find that um, a participant needs to be reassigned um, and we don't have a site, I'll go out and try to actually find a site that would be appropriate and, and find a new site. So tell me, um, how do you find seniors who are eligible, or is it up to the host site to give you a pool of potential people? Basically, um, participants will come into the local, we operate out of the local uh, one-stop one career centers. And where is that here? The one in Monmouth County is in Neptune, and the one in Ocean County is in Toms River. Okay. And at each of those sites, we have an employment resource specialist who handles the program for that county. Um, so somebody may come in, and they can get screened at the front desk. They'll, they'll find out their older worker, unemployed, and they'll basically set up an appointment with the employment resource specialist. Um, we also have flyers sometimes that are we put up in libraries. Um, and people, people hear about us through other seniors, um, host sites, it, it, the word gets around. We, we, we generally have, uh, you know, if we're, if we're on a, a freeze where we can't bring in new participants, we'll have a waiting list. So what other resources do you provide um, to both the uh, senior and or the host site in regards to um, job training? Some of the Participants who come into our program may be lacking, say, in computer skills. Mm -hmm. So our employment resource specialist will make a determination. Um, we, we have what we call an individual employment plan that is actually conducted by the uh, job counselor at the One Stop Career Center. And they will basically do an in-depth interview and determine you know, what barriers there are to the participant being employed. And some of those barriers may be you know, computer training or a lack of any other kind of training. And we'll try to point them in the right direction. Um, I know uh, Scan Here is a wonderful resource. Um, you, you offer computer training. Um, some libraries do. Some of the one stops actually have computer training courses. So we'll try to basically point them in the right direction to uh, help increase their skill set. Yeah, and, and seeing that you brought it up as far as Scan, we do have a computer lab here. We have 13 stations. And um, we are inviting the public to come in. Um, especially the 50 plus population to come use the the computers we don't have a time limitation i know that i've been reading that many cases where people are going to try to get more skills mm -hmm. that they can only stay on a computer for a short period of right. time and we do have some te technical assistance or people who are skilled to help them um, we do have classes and that's a whole different piece um, that we provide regularly but the computers are here we want them to be used and we are encouraging people so please feel free in your program yes. to uh, get that word out yes That'd it, be wonderful it's a great resource and and we really love workforce 55 plus loves to partner with you know organizations like your own to just really the whole idea is to help that participant get the job training and get the job and so the other piece here, because being in the field for a long period of time, knowing that getting a job is one thing, getting a paycheck is another, but the social part of being in a work environment is huge. I mean, it really yes. helps um, with self-esteem, um, self-worth, all of that. Can you share any of your personal stories or, or examples of how people have been very successful 
by being placed? Oh, absolutely. We have um, anywhere from people who are 55 to 60 who are, are basically still in the workforce and, and because of the recession and the economy, they're really, you know, they're sort of on hard times. They may come in the program and, and move right out uh, because they're going to find a job. Uh, we have people in their 90s who have been in the program and they're, you know, to, for them, it, it's, it's, they're not only getting the, uh, the, the, the stipend, the paycheck from the program, but they're getting, they're actually performing, you know, a valuable service to the host site that they're, they're placed at. Yeah, and they're probably bringing a, a, a wealth of skills and knowledge to the, the workplace also. Exactly. Uh, so exactly. that's really exciting. But um, I, working with, with the, the 55 plus population for a lot of years, uh, I know that um, while they might not have in some, some cases, not all, I mean, we do know that the senior population or the 50 plus population is, as far as computer skills and surfing the internet, um, the numbers are huge. I mean, people kind of put everyone in little boxes thinking right. that they don't have those skills or don't use the computer, but that's not so. We know that. Right. Um, but being able to use those uh, appropriately in a work setting is really important. Absolutely. So that's really um, very helpful. So can you tell our viewers the contact information? How can they get in touch with uh, with the appropriate resource person at your facility? All they need to do is call the, um, their county's one-stop career center, which uh, sometimes people refer to that as the unemployment office. Okay. Um, we call it the one-stop career center because we offer both employment services as well as unemployment services. Um, they can ask to speak to the Workforce 55 plus person. Uh -huh. We call them an uh, ERS employment resource specialist. Um, do you have a phone number or a website? Um, they, we have, we actually have, um, my phone number I think is available. People okay. can always call me. What is it? Um, it's 732-775-1386. Uh, okay. And that, that would be my, I actually have an um, uh, answering machine, so if you don't get me personally, you can leave a message. I'm sure they will. Um, or you can just visit the local One Stop Career Center and ask for the Workforce 55 Plus program. Um, and I just wanted to mention another, we were speaking about resources before. Right. One of um, a great new resource that we have is called the Jobs for Jersey. It's basically a, a revamped job search website run by the New Jersey Department of Labor. Um, and it offers, it's both for employers and employees. Um, anybody who's looking for a job or wants to post a job, um, you can build your resume on the website. Um, and of wow. course, it ends up being a great resource, not just for everybody, but also for all older workers. And that is jobsforjersey.com? Right, it's jobs and the number four, jersey all together, dot com. So it's a resource that's out there that you yes. don't have to go through an agency. They can just get on that any time, right. any place. Basically, you register with the website. It will help you build a resume or you can upload your resume. Um, you can create job search uh, alerts, emails. Um, so they'll actually send you an automatic email with job listings that, that meet your criteria. Great. Um, so it's a really good resource. It's easy to use and um, it's definitely helping our, our older workers uh, get back into the job market. Yeah, and I'm sure that, um, I, again, after all of the emergencies that we've been experiencing lately, that that is going to be very helpful to not only the 55 yes. plus population, but others seeking employment and yes. employers looking for good employees. Right. So it's a two-way street. Right. Um, we only have a few minutes, mm -hmm. seconds left even, and so I would just want to um, talk a little bit about the future of this. I mean, this, this program is here to stay. I'm under the impression. Well, our, yes, it's, it's a basically it's a yearly grant that okay. we receive from uh, the Senior Community Service Employment Program umbrella, which is operated, uh, administered through the U.S. Department of Labor. Um, but yeah, the program's been around for quite some time and we don't really see it going away just because there's such a need yeah. to help. Um, I, I recently read a statistic that said uh, uh, hiring for the older workers is increasing. Absolutely. So it's a really, you know, it's a very promising thing. So we're going to leave on that note. And, Great. And uh, thank you again for being on our no, show. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Have a good day.